Hi everyone, Bernard here with another citizen vlog and it's a part two, it's a part two of the, uh, we had a look at this uh, recently, if you've catch, please catch up with part one, it's part two sort of follows on so it's best if you want, go back and watch part two, it's not necessary but obviously we were looking at this and obviously we were just looking, looking at the 1993-94 season with the Blues review from the Manchester Union News and obviously looking at various things and just just a few little questions for fun on city players and information if you if you know the information on other other things as well just as we're looking through and remembering that interesting season to say the least wasn't it please if you're new to the citizen channel please push the old uh, subscribe button that'd be fantastic push the bell notification so you know when these little vlogs and specials are coming out and if you're into movies and as well or tv dramas i do little vlogs on little movie reviews and tv drama reviews and specials information etc so if you're into anything like that please uh, check the playlists and uh, all subscriptions much appreciated thank you very much right so part two so we'd finished the uh, part one about halfway through the season we just beaten everton at home obviously peter horton was a bit bit up and down here the fans were still dispirited and the swales out campaign was still in full swing um so we went into like the tottenham game and you got kind of bankrupt blues and obviously the fans were getting a lot of praise in the in the uh, information on that game um you know obviously you're stuck by the team even though at times as i said in the stadium it was quite toxic the the attitude wasn't very very good and we'd had a good cup run hadn't we we were doing all right it was a coca-cola cup the league cup this season and we're doing quite well but um obviously we'd drawn at home with nottingham forest uh, uh sorry we'd drawn away at nottingham forest which was a good good result because they were actually riding high in the first division you know the uh, you know the equivalent of the second division I and mean, obviously we were still in the premiership um but then we've gotten back to main road and unfortunately not great we got it's quite depressing i mean it wasn't the massive crowd i think the crowd was uh, about 14 just over fourteen thousand. we did take the lead but unfortunately the, we were not out of the coca-cola cup so a bit more despair for uh, for the city fans obviously we, i think we still had the fa cup to look forward to <laughs> we'll talk about that in a moment but uh, no that was a bit a bit depressing for city fans obviously and then obviously after that we uh, had a little trip to ewood park and um, some great images from the match at Ewood Park, which unfortunately, again, yet again, we lost. Cold turkey, it was Christmas time, so it was it was quite a depressing time. Um, just an interesting one. Can you recognise that player there? So the uh, Blackburn player, who that is. Obviously links to City somewhere along the line. Certainly links to Manchester anyway. Not very well liked uh, by, by City fans, if you can figure out who that player was. So all wasn't all wasn't too bad. There was some nice thing. We had a, a gentleman. We had another gentleman joined us. Obviously, the next game at home we drew with Southampton one one. Uh, but it was this guy. He had a new uh, had a new boy. He was this young man who uh, put in some sterling performances for City. Remember that guy? I'm sure you do. And then it was a trip to um, high flying Newcastle. Obviously, we were obviously run by Mister. Kevin Keegan um, and there was a couple of goals by a very very well known player obviously Mr Andy Cole who obviously was going to uh, obviously join Manchester United after Newcastle and obviously uh, would would join City as well at some stage and he's still he's still surprised I still can't I still find it very hard to imagine Andy Cole playing for City I don't know why he's just one of those players that I just can't ever picture in this city shirt. I mean, I know he did. I know he was there. And I watched him, but I just, I just can't place it. It's just really weird. So not great. But Kevin Keegan, obviously, we trying to do Newcastle a turn, weren't we? Obviously, we're trying to do Kevin Keegan a good turn. Obviously, a good home win against Leicester City, a four-one home win there against Leicester City, and we had um, someone scored a hat trick in that one. Um, and there he is. You can see his image there. That's that's the gentleman concerned. Who is it? So obviously, which which player is that? It's one I certainly wouldn't got without without obviously reading the paper, read the information. But an hat trick for that player. So can you tell me who that player was? And the game, home game. I think we drew with Arsenal early in the season, haven't we? So we had a, we had a home game with, with Arsenal and another nil nil draw, which which wasn't too bad, I suppose, at the time. Blues make a scrap of it, but lose on points. So obviously, we didn't lose on points, did we? We shared the points, but I know, I know what they're saying. But uh, who's that keeper? Can you think? Uh, yeah, keeper there. Obviously, would uh, be a city keeper as well. I'm sure you know who that is. Who's that? Uh, 
keeper is for Arsenal, obviously we all know. I think uh, it was either that season or the season after we had a bit of a, a nightmare in a in a European final, didn't he? But uh, that was quite interesting. And a trip to Anfield. It's never never right unless we get beat at Anfield, is it? So we had our normal trip, yearly trip to Anfield. Ailing City are now on the critical list. Obviously, a, a two-one defeat at Anfield. No, no surprise there. But um, picture of a player there. Can you recognise that Liverpool player? Not the greatest. Uh, I saw him in a program two, three years ago. Obviously, a little bit, bit little bit bigger now. Uh, this gentleman. But can you, you remember who that uh, Liverpool player? And as I said early on, we we uh, just had the FA Cup to look forward to, didn't we? In the uh, after we got knocked out of the Coca-Cola Cup, obviously we weren't going to win the league, were we? But uh, yeah, I mean that wasn't a great, the greatest um, ending, was it? And there's something uh, who used to take our penalties at that. We had a penalty saved as well, unfortunately. So who was our penalty taker? It wasn't a bad penalty taker, I don't think, but we had a penalty against Cardiff. Unfortunately, we missed it. Do you think you do you know who actually took the penalty uh, against Cardiff when we got beat that day? That's uh, do you know that? And Obviously, at last, another, at last a home win. Manchester City 2, Ipswich 1. Shalalala Lee. What's that got to do with anything? Well, obviously, Lee took over. That was the first game with Lee in charge. So, a, a crowd of, uh, I think it was 28,000. Uh, what for that game? So, quite cheerful. Lee had took over. He was in the director's box. Obviously, all the furore about that. And we beat Ipswich 2 1. Remember that player there? Can you think of who that, that Ipswich player is? Very well known Ipswich player. Gritty, very gritty, uh, very gritty player, if you can tell, you remember who that was. So a great start, was it, under Francis Lee? Although it wasn't it wasn't long before, obviously, we drew a blank against West Ham, so it proved we had a few deficiencies. City needed a hit man to fire the Blues, so obviously, we needed something, and then obviously, that was, uh, that was soon followed. By um, oh, we've got an image here. A couple of oh, there we go. And then to the West Ham game, a couple of uh, a couple of players for West Ham. There, look at the players for West Ham. Who are the, who are the players for West Ham? Just uh, have a look at that. Just tell me who they are. Have City connections, the West Ham players, not the City players. I'm sure, you'll know that. And then we went to uh, then we went to absolutely well. Coventry, we got absolutely pummeled at Coventry. But look at them kits, look at them kits. It must have been a, you know, they must. Have, if that had been on sale, they would have sent the screens funny, wouldn't they? Look at that, that, that Coventry kit and our obviously um, purple and white striped kit that we used to have. So uh, that would have certainly sent the uh, cameras into uh, turmoil. Um, nil 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 against Aston Villa. Pretty dire, isn't it? A lot of a lot of low scoring games. I mean, we weren't. You know, we could play some good attractive football under uh, Mr. Horton, couldn't we? But uh, he could be a little bit readish, couldn't he? He could be a little bit <laughs> Mark Hughes, obviously, at times. 0-0 uh, against Villa. We beat Swindon at home again, so another, another win at least to pick up some points. Uh, and a certain player scored a whole own goal for Swindon, if you can look at think who that player might be. Again, with a City connection eventually. So we see who that is. So a good win against Swindon. Uh, game against QPR, away against QPR. City find a lady lifesaver. So obviously a point, a point at QPR. But uh, who's that defender? There's a defender at the bottom there. You see that defender? Who's that guy? City defender. Obviously lost in the midst of time. Not one of the most uh, noticeable faces. You think, oh yeah, that's such and such a person. But who do you think it is? City nil, Wimbledon one, action station. So, so we're in trouble, aren't we? So the Dons have come and done a, a smashing grab at, at City, unfortunately. So again, not the greatest result. And again, at home to Sheffield United, a, a, a really, really poor draw. And obviously, you've got Francis looking a bit dejected in the director's box there. But who's that next to him? Ex City player who was obviously connected with his sort of his right hand man and did a lot of the negotiations for the takeover. Can you remember what his name was? Uh, Man City nil, Sheffield United nil. So not great. Horton on the gallows. So Mr. Horton's in trouble, isn't he? So it meant we went to Oldham. Obviously, Mr. Royal. We've already talked about that in the first part of this. Um, obviously, we went to, for a nil niller. You know, jar. It was a dreadful, dreadful game. I'm sure if you were there, you probably remember it. Blues and Latics in the stinker. But what was interesting was um, 
the Oldham team, the actual Oldham team that started. Can you guess how many players had a connection with City in the starting eleven for Oldham? Just have a think about that one. Just think how many players you think would have had a play. You know, it's quite obviously it's quite a few, but obviously it surprised me when we did it. We'll come, we'll come back to that, and I'll tell you after about that. Uh, a good draw against uh, Ipswich Town away. And a certain gentleman there celebrated his very first goal for City. So, can you name that little gentleman who scored his first goal for City at um, Ipswich Town? A good win against Villa. I have a certain gentleman who used to like to do little flips when he scored a goal. Do you remember who uh, this guy is here doing the flip? And a good win at home to Aston Villa. 3 0 points. Very, very welcome, obviously. And then we had a 1-0 win at Southampton, which was, uh, you know, not a place we used to go and win too often. But um, we've got a great image of um, goalkeeper Besant being beat there. But um, obviously this City, who's the City player? I had no idea who that was when he obviously scored the goal at Southampton. But who's that? Who's that City player? Can you remember? No, not a chance. Obviously, uh he was, I think he was German. This is just, I mean, look at the headline. Look at the, no, it certainly wasn't Uwe, the bomber. We were talking about another bomber, obviously, uh, another German. Uh, and the happy days, it seems everyone was brightening up. Blues in seventh heaven as we get, we uh, beat Newcastle 2-1 uh, at Main Road in front of over 33,000 fans. So, you know, the fans were coming back slowly now that Lee had taken over. Just perhaps a few who dropped out were coming back. Yeah, uh, one one again a bit of a, a bit of a miserable one one draw with Norwich. We're exactly scoring five, six and seven goals these days, were we unfortunately? And then obviously we had another trip to uh to Old Trafford for the second derby and it was a bit of a feeble affair, wasn't it? I, I don't even remember us being in it that much. Nice if we're going for the league, obviously Blackburn in second uh, second spot, but uh, sadly a two nil defeat against United. Um post haste to defeat the city. So it wasn't it wasn't the greatest. Andy Dibble was in goal that day, so Andy Dibble was in goal now for, for City. Which is interesting, you know, I think Tony Colton was injured or uh, something happened to Tony Colton at the end of the season, hadn't he? Um and then there was an, uh, another game get towards the end of the season now. A two two draw with Chelsea. Um the Dream Merchants, City's rude awakening, the Dream Merchants. Well what was significant about that game, can you remember? Um obviously I've Touched upon this in a couple of vlogs recently, but uh, Man City two, Chelsea two. It was the, it was the last home game, but what was significant about it? Uh, and then of course we went to uh, Sheffield Wednesday for the last game of the season, and I, I got comfortable draw. We were safe. There's no problems. Who a top of the pop, so who they were also getting a lot of uh, street cred there. And the Sheffield Wednesday were managed by a certain ex City player. Can you think who that ex City player might have been? But we'll finish this. Uh, well, there's a Brian Horton's final word, but I'll go through that at the end of the when we've gone through and just uh, confirmed all the players. Yeah, so that's that's the roundup for the second part. So lots of questions for you to have a go out there and see how you did with the different things. Right, the first one I wanted to know was a Blackburn player, wasn't it? It was a uh, it was a Blackburn player I wanted you to identify. Of course, uh, we were talking obviously United connections as well. David May. There, the Blackburn player, City's new boy, but um, obviously some marvellous performances in a City shirt. Obviously, was the wonderful David Rollcastle there, and obviously Newcastle. Obviously, the Cole Hall. Obviously, it was Mr. Andy Cole, wasn't it? There, who, uh, who uh, obviously I, I always forget. I do always forget Andy Cole, and the goal scorer, the hat trick, City four, Leicester one. I would have no idea about it. I remember the surname. I wouldn't have known his first name. Kara Ingebrigtsen. Remember them? Kara Ingebrigtsen. What a star. <laughs> and the Arsenal keeper, of course. So he, he did, did spend the season with City, didn't he? Obviously, we're talking Mr. David Seaman. Uh, so that was the Arsenal keeper. And the Liverpool. The Liverpool player, of course, was Razor, wasn't it? It was uh, Neil Ruddock. Razor Ruddock. So I'm sure... I'm sure you got that one. And the penalty taker, who, who unfortunately at Cardiff, I admit, had a penalty save. There's an image of him there 
uh, running into the keeper after the penalty was saved. Uh, but obviously, it's Keith Keogh was our regular penalty taker, at, penalty taker at that stage. And the Ipswich player, obviously that was John Walk. Remember John Walk? And the two players for West Ham. Looking at the two players for West Ham there, Dagger and Motors tops. Obviously, two players with City links, Ian Bishop. And Clive Allen, of course, Ian Bishop and Clive Allen. And so the second part, and the Swindon player, yeah, the Swindon player who put through his own goal, and good win City win 2 1. Swindon player put through his own goal, a certain gentleman called Kevin Horlock. I think we remember Kevin, don't we? Just, just a little bit. The City player that isn't, wasn't overly familiar to many people, obviously, was Andy Hill. And the guy sat next to the dejected Francis Lee was, of course, uh, Colin Barlow was the guy next to Francis Lee. And the Oldham game, yeah, there was six, six Manchester player links with Manchester City players playing. There was um, Richard Jobson, who went on to play for City, Steve Redmond, Neil Poynton, Tony Henry, Darren Beckford and Rick Holden all started for Oldham that night. So they've either played for City or would go on to play for City. And on the bench, we also had Roger Palmer. So there was seven with a link as well because Roger Palmer didn't actually get on, the, on for the game. But he was actually on the bench for Oldham. So that was quite an amazing start if you, if you think about it. And the player score, their celebrated score against Ipswich, obviously there is Mr. Paul Walsh, obviously. Great love to, I think not a lot of us like Paul Walsh, didn't we? I mean, he's a, well, he's a great little player, certainly at the time. And the guy who liked to do his little backflips, obviously, was uh, Mr. Peter B. Griff. Remember that? And the image of the guy who put the winner past uh, Besson against Southampton. Stefan Stephen Karl. K-A-R-L. Stefan Karl. Another bomber. Another German bomber. Not quite as impressive as our other guy, was he? But uh, that was an interesting one. And obviously the Chelsea game we talked about, the Chelsea 2, City 2. Well, that was the last day of the Kipax, wasn't it? So that was the last home game, the last day of the Kipax, which I've covered in other blogs as well, and little specials on the last day of the Kipax. So that was what was significant about that game. The Sheffield Wednesday manager in our last game of the season, of course, was uh, a young manager called Trevor Francis. So I wonder whatever happened to him. Yeah, and Brian Horton's final word, I'll just, just finish on this uh, to finish the season. I was delighted with our showing, but I have been pleased with the team since before the transfer deadline, when the chairman backed me with £1.7 to bring in Walsh, Beagre and Rossler. It was a terrific game, and there was nothing end of season about it from either side. We were a bit disappointed about their goal, because it came from a free kick, which shouldn't have been awarded. Terry Phelan had a smashing game. And so did Rossler. Andy Dibble pulled off some great saves, and Tony Corton was first onto the pitch at the end to congratulate them. As I said, Corton did go on to be the player of the year, obviously. It has been a tough season, has it, Brian? <laughs> but I never thought we would go down. Well, I'm sure we all have total faith in, in Brian. But I'm sure none of us believe we would go down that season. Impossible. So, well done, Brian. He kept us up. Um, so that's all we can say, really. That, that finishes off the look of the 1994 season. I hope you got all the little questions right. Some, some, some little things were easier than others, weren't they? But we hope you enjoyed that anyway. Our second part two of our look at uh, the Blues review for uh, Manchester City, season 93-94. I hope you enjoyed that. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please for all the latest City stuff, and if you're into movies and TV drama, please follow me on. I've got two Twitter accounts. You can follow me on either or both. They're both linked together anyway at Charles Deneen, Deneen spelled D-I-N-N-N-N, or at Nostalgia underscore Movie. So you can follow me on there for all the latest news. And I'm on Facebook at Burn Deneen, with links to my little website, where my little day job, moviegamenostalgia.com, for old and rare DVDs, movie posters from the 1990s and 2000s, and some older, rare board games, retro board games from Waddington Parkers, MB games, stuff like that. So... If you can spend a bit of time, thumbs up to you. If you can have a quick look at movie games, nostalgia.com. If you're after some gift ideas and into your movie posters or indeed old rare DVDs from the classic films, etc., please have a look on there. Much appreciated. Anyway, thanks for watching this. Hopefully, you'll join me again so very soon for something else. What are we going to do with the rest of the day? Have a great one. Look after yourselves, look after your friends, look after your families, and more importantly, let's all look after each other. And I'll see you all again very soon. Thanks for watching.